Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with Parliament back this week, I'm glad to rise tonight to continue pushing on this government to end legislated poverty for people with disabilities and as a significant step in this direction to adequately fund and properly implement the Canada Disability Benefit with urgency. Because sadly, while the bill, the Canada Disability Benefit Act, was passed last June, still no money has been set aside for the benefit, and it continues to this day that 40% of those living in poverty across the country are people with disabilities. Tonight, I'll be focused on following up on a specific concern about how the Canada Dis Disability Benefit is being designed. Here's the story. As many Canadians know, nearly every important decision about the benefit, from who is eligible to how much it's going to be, is being left to regulations which are now being drafted. Late last year, though, I began to hear from organizations that serve the disability, com the disability community that the Department of Finance is considering determining eligibility through the incredibly burdensome application for the disability tax credit. When I say burdensome, I mean it's one of the most difficult government programs for a person to qualify for. It's qualified by submitting a T2201 form, a 16-page form that an applicant needs to have their doctor complete 14 pages of. A recent report from the Kids Brain Health Network in collaboration with researchers from the Disability Policy Research Program and McGill University break down how bad it is. First, long delays in processing applications, inconsistent knowledge of staff leading to rejections that are often viewed as arbitrary. Secondly, difficulties with the T2201 application form, including that it lacks clear instructions and criteria, which then often leads to requests for additional instructions and information, and even specific wording being required for approval. Third, that doctors, their level of knowledge with the form itself and their level of tenacity to reapply will affect the extent to which the applicant may or may not be successful. And then fourth, constant needs to reapply, including for recipients with conditions that are lifelong. As a result, there's an entire industry of disability tax credit consultants set up to charge people with disabilities simply to apply for the credit. Now, we shouldn't even be having this conversation. I thought we'd already solved this issue because back when the Canada Disability Benefit Act was at committee, my team and I were successful with five amendments passed to improve the bill out of the nine that got through. And one of the amendments addressed this very issue. It changed the bill to say the following. In section 11.1, the governor and council may make regulations F respecting applications for a benefit, including regulations providing for an application process that is without barriers, as defined in Section 2 of the Accessible Canada Act. When I proposed the amendment, I gave the example of a person with a disability who's already qualified for a, pro a program completing their taxes, as is the case for many other benefits. It's all why I asked the minister in December if they would just <coughs> follow the law that's now passed. She didn't answer me at the time. And so I'm going to ask again tonight, the Canada Disability Benefit Act requires the Canada Disability Benefit to be barrier free. It's clear the disability tax credit is full of barriers. So will the parliamentary secretary now commit to the government following the law and ensuring the regulations are developed, ensuring the Canada Disability Benefit be barrier free? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary, the Minister of Diversity, Inclusion and Persons with Disability. Mr. President. Uh, I want to thank the member from Kitchener Centre for his important advocacy around the disability benefit, highlighting, uh, highlighting concerns and bringing them to this House. And uh, the, the, disability benef uh, the disability community is keen and anxious to see that the benefit will be realized and realized correctly. We understand that many Canadians living with a disability need additional support that will be provided by the Canada Disability Benefit. ...to get money into the pockets of those who need it most. We must get it right. The delivery of the benefit needs to be smooth, targeted, effective and possible. While the previous Conservative government made promises to Canadians and to the disability community, 
we actually fulfilled this promise and are going to realize it. Our government has delivered to persons with disabilities. We'll continue doing so. We carefully crafted consultations with the disability community, and I myself, over the last five months of being Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister, have learned about the disability community, have learned about the contours, the, 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 the uniquenesses within the community, and there are many. The disability benefit will reflect these contours, these uniquenesses of the community. Bill C-22 received royal assent on June 22nd, 2023. Immediately, within a month, we announced the start of meaningful consultations. These consultations informed the design of the regulations to serve those in need. This is absolutely necessary, Mr. Speaker. Le processus réglementaire est... The regulatory process must be respected. ...to get it right than to include those with lived experiences. Persons with disabilities need to be, have the opportunity contri to contribute to the, des the design of the benefits regulations. The disability community must have a say, and this is how the benefit will look and will reflect those concerns. In fact, it's required by the Canada Disability Benefit Act. The benefit has the real potential to reduce poverty, to alleviate it, and to support those uh, who are seeking financial security, those who are of working age, and P Canadians with disabilities. We know what the target is. We will hit the mark. Our latest engagement was, has been via an online tool where Canadians throughout the country shared their thoughts in detail on the benefit. We have sought the advice also within key areas from experts and the disability community and advocates. This addresses the member's question on how the application process should be structured. We are now analyzing those responses, those very responses from coast to coast, from advocates, from people who are living with disabilities, and, and from those with the variations of disabilities that are reflected within our country. We are assessing those responses right now, and we are drafting the regulations. They're being put into the final stage. We are making sure that obstacles are removed so that those people, pe so that Canadians, those with disabilities, will have access to this important prestation or benefit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Respectfully, the fact is that this government has not delivered the Canada Disability Benefit. I will agree, though, with the Parliamentary Secretary that he's right. They do have to get this right. And what the disability community is trying to tell him is that this government needs to follow what is in the Canada Disability Benefit Act. And specifically, that is that the benefit must be barrier-free. And stakeholders are being told that the disability tax credit may be used as a way to access the Canada Disability Benefit. That is in contravention of the Act. It is not what the community is calling for. And so what I've been asking from the Minister, I'm asking again tonight, is very specifically, will the Parliamentary Secretary make clear that the disability tax credit will not be used in delivering the Canada Disability Benefit because it is not barrier-free? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, um, again, I want to thank uh, the member uh, from Kitchener Centre for his advocacy. And uh, to pick up on what was just uh, replied uh, the, in the previous reply, that we are currently collecting the responses of Canadians who have fed into the process thus far. They are being put into regulation. Those regulations will be first in draft form when again Canadians will be able to reply and to, to improve them. But the feedback that we're getting across the country is being put into, uh, into a draft regulations and Canadians will again have the chance to, to uh, reflect on them before uh, the benefit is rolled out. This benefit is being done in full consultation with the community in principle, with nothing without us, with means, which means that we can only get this benefit hand-in-hand hand with the disability community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.